What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and I know it's been a bit, uh, I was away there and uh, with the multiplayer Monday my footage ended up getting corrupt so I didn't have a multiplayer Monday video but uh, we're finally back now, I'm back from vacation and of course I wanted to work on the real car so I had made this engine piece and uh, you know it's a piston engine, works pretty simply and I'm going to eventually use this in a real car with a gearbox and transmission but before I go through all the gearbox and transmission stuff again because we've already done that I thought you know the one thing we haven't done at all is address the steering issue and how to steer a realistic car now of course this assembly here looks a little bit ridiculous but most real cars use what's called a uh, rack and pinion steering so you have basically a line of gear teeth on a straight rack as it's called and you have a single spinning gear that comes down from the steering shaft or the steering column and that gear as it spins moves the rack left or right alongside and then if you have power steering there's an additional hydraulic cylinder that gets uh that helps provide additional power to the rack now of course in scrap mechanic we don't we don't really uh, need to have power steering because of course the steering column is just powered by electric motors and that makes everything more powerful. So this is what we've got basically here. This is a, a rack and, and, and pinion. So we've got the rack would be these five white teeth here and the pinion would be this yellow gear tooth guy right here. And so what's happening is we've got just a double stacked bearing there hooked up to electric motors and the electric motors are hooked up to either sensor with the steering. So as we turn left and right, you can see there it will spin the rack or spin the pinion, sorry, which will then move the teeth along the rack. And it actually works pretty well. You can see, so the rack stays straight. It, uh, it never moves out of position. Now, the nice thing about this is actually the steering will hold itself wherever you stop it. So you see, you can, you can do sort of gradual steering but uh, no matter what, whenever you let off, that's where it is. And uh, it works really, really quite well. I was really impressed, but this is really how a real car would, would do steering for the most part. I mean, obviously, again, we'd have a hydraulic cylinder to assist, but with the strength of those electric motors, you really don't need it. And the coolest thing about this steering is it has a lot of power behind it. So, you know, there's always the issue with, uh, with certain steering mechanisms. For example, if we set up a really basic steering mechanism. Right, so this is probably your most basic car. You know, we've got some simple steering, uh, just a vertical bearing there, and then, you know, engine on the back wheels, and, uh, you know, overall it drives, and you don't really have any issues, and this has, this is, you know, got no problems. But then, of course, if we start to increase the weight on the front wheels, for example, if you like to use, let's say, the big barrels, or even, you know, bigger wheels, or double stacked wheels, or anything like that, um, then you run into the issue where the steering bearing will sort of flop around per se. So it'll drive fine here, no problem, but you see if we hit a rock here, see how it just flops like that? And uh, you know, there's nothing really you can do about that. It, it kind of prevents you from, from doing a lot of things. And you know, that's sort of an issue. But if we take this exact same setup here and we put it on the rack and pinion steering model, like so, because the rack and pinion uses like an actual gear meshing with another gear, um, it has pretty much infinite strength. I mean, it's it's beefy, and uh, you know if we run into this here, there's no there's no flop at all. It'll just it'll just turn into it. You see, and we can even turn it backwards um, to the point actually where it's actually kind of ridiculous if you if we take this and go to the extreme level. So I thought this was kind of awesome, but you can see that the steering will always stay up. It's, it just, it's too heavy to move now. It doesn't even do anything, but it, it's an extremely powerful steering system and it's almost infinitely powered. Um, but of course it is a little bit interesting to set up. So if you actually notice if we, if we delete these now, let's just, yeah, we don't need all this stuff. The rack is actually free floating. So you can see there, the rack actually free floats just in this sort of L shaped or U shaped trough of the concrete. The, the rack itself is only attached to the two wheels and then the wheels themselves are attached on a double pivot point. So you have the wheel attached to this pivot point which extends out on this arm to a secondary pivot point here which goes up on this little cross beam and that allows the rack to stay straight. You can see there the joiner piece will go on an angle as the steering goes on an angle. So it doesn't stay completely straight but you need your rack to stay completely straight otherwise your gear tooth will fall out of mesh. And so in order to do that the rack just slides you know back and forth through that little U-shaped trough but it's not actually attached to anything as you can see. 
And uh, in a real car, they do this with a with a cylinder, and it's inside of a cylinder. But uh, you know, this is this is pretty much the equivalent I came up with. But then, of course, you know, the one issue with this is most real cars, the steering will recenter itself as you drive, and uh, this doesn't do that. And so that's kind of an issue. So you can see there, it's great for something like a truck or an off-road truck. We could, uh, if I had a suspension attached to all this, but you could sit here and you know you could drive straight and set your steering to a slight angle and then just you know constantly hold that and no problem but we want to be able to sometimes you know center the steering so I decided to make another version which uh, uses some sensors and you can see there the rack is still the same rack but we've got a little bit of this extra u-piece and that allows the sensors here which are set to range 3 to pick up if they're on the rack or not so you can see there if we go off the rack, this one sensor shuts off, but the other one stays on constantly. So that means we know we're turned to the one side. So then all this logic does is basically say, when you let go of the steering button, I need to readjust until both those sensors are lit up again. And that in turn centers the steering. So you can see there we can go to the left, that one sensor is off, and then the logic goes, well, I have to readjust. But it actually works. You can see there, um, you know, we can turn. And then as soon as we let off the steering, it'll, uh, it has a little bit of a delay, obviously, due to the circuits and the speed of electric motors and stuff. But this steering has a ton of power, and overall, it's just great for a truck. But, uh, you know, definitely going to use it for the real car, just to prove the point. So, overall, guys, I'm really happy with this design. Um, you know, obviously, I would need to add suspension, which would mean I'd need a whole a series of other sets of bearings and all that. Uh, but I think for the purposes of the real car to save on lag, I'm not going to do all the extra bearings for suspension. Because last time I tried to do that with all the CV joints that could move up and down, uh, it just caused way too many issues. But I think for the real car, I'm going to use this kind of steering uh, going to a gearbox, which then in turn probably goes to like a rear differential of some kind. And uh, and then overall afterwards, get that... Oh, god dang it. And then after it goes to the rear differential, we'll have it go to a... Um, you know, down to the wheels and all that. And I think it'll work out quite well, but... You know, for the purposes of today, I think all we need to do, really, to make a real car is we're just going to attach this engine. I mean, we're just going to give it basically just forward. So all we're going to do, we're just going to cut this off and just cut this back. And like so. And yeah, we'll just cut all this. See, and then all we got to do, really, is just take this engine. We'll just disconnect you because we don't need that. We'll just weld you to this. See? Problem solved. Right, so if we take the rack and pinion style steering on the front and we slap an engine on the back with a simple piston throttle dealio going on here, so controller gets activated, the piston extends up a block, which then deactivates this sensor, which in turn activates the throttle to start up the engine. And then we attach that with a straight fixed gear to the back. Um, we kind of get, you know, a prototype real car. I mean, it's not exactly a real car because we don't have any sort of gearing. We can't go in reverse and uh, we don't have any sort of throttle control. But if we hold W, see, it'll turn on those that back engine there. And then, you know, we have a pinion controlled steering. So technically speaking, I mean, now we can just sort of roam around the map. And uh, this isn't obviously what I want to do for the real car because I do want to put, you know, a differential on it and, uh, and give it some speed control and, uh, you know, not make it so long because this is more like a real limo. But, uh, you know, it works. It's it's kind of a prototype, so this is really kind of getting there. And I really love, you know, just how fluid that rack and pinion steering is and just how, you know, really how strong it is. I mean, it works quite well, but obviously we're not we're not breaking any land speed records. But overall, guys, I am really happy with uh, where the real car is going with that rack and pinion steering. Make sure you guys leave your comments down in the section below um, and let me know what you think about the real car and what I should do next if I should add a differential or if I should work on the gearbox next or uh, what's going on so uh, you know definitely need some some elevated ground clearance too but uh, overall I think this is really quite awesome and you know it's pretty lag free right now I haven't I haven't really gotten any lag issues so uh, definitely moving along with the scrap mechanic the pistons are definitely helping for sure so all we really need on this thing is a, uh, a proper gearbox, a forward and reverse gear, maybe a low and a high gear, and uh, a clutch as well, because I do want to have the engine automatically turn, like you turn it on with a switch, and you leave the engine on constantly like we would have in a real car. You don't turn your engine off on, you know, when you're driving, but uh, 
Overall, guys, I'm really happy with this design, so uh, make sure you guys hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Make sure you, again, leave your comments. Let me know what you think about this. I think I am going to upload this just for you guys to have some fun with. I think I'll just call this the, uh, I don't know what I'm going to call this, like piston car steering stuff. Um, I, I don't really know. I don't want to call it a real car just yet because it's missing so many things, but uh, I think you guys might enjoy this. It, again, is really quite ridiculous. It's so slow. But it does use the proper, you know, rack and pinion steering there. Do you know, it just chugs along. It's super quiet, though. But anyways, make sure you guys hit those buttons down below. And uh, definitely leave your suggestions for other cool builds and stuff you'd like to see in Scrap Mechanic. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you all next time.